Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. But my planter is backwards. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So for today's video, I've had a fair number of people asking me about suggestions for fall planters, things a little bit different from things like pansies, mums, and kale, cabbage, those sorts of things. Thought I'd go ahead and do a little bit of a rundown on some plants I like for fall planters. There's no particular order to any of this, and I was gonna do like a top 10, top 20. I don't even know how many I'm gonna go over, so I can't really do that. But for starters, sedum. There are lots of different forms of sedum. This planter was put together last year in a fall planter video, and this is what came back from that planter last year. It's sometimes nice to do some things with perennials. There's a creeping jenny in there also. With this planter, when I get around to planting it up, I'm going to put more perennials in there so that every year I don't really have to do much with it, just lift it, pull some of the soil out, refresh the soil. That's it. Sedums are nice and easy. Sedum, that's a very, very broad thing to say. There are a lot of different types of sedums out there, but I'm talking about more of the hardy varieties of sedums. I just have a small selection of flowers here to talk about. There are some others that'll be worth mentioning that I don't have right in front of me, but these are just some plants that I've picked up that I thought these would be great for fall containers. They stand out really well and talk about them real quick or you know as quick as i talk about things for starters right here this is a hellenium the variety is called mariachi bandera flowers are teeny tiny and adorable aren't they they're very small i like the contrast between the buds and then the newer flowers like this one right here see there's not as much color on that one but then as they age the pollen comes out and they get more of a fuzzy yellow appearance to them isn't that cool? I really like it. I don't know if the yellow that's back there is part of the mariachi type. It's just this one at the nursery had two different colors in it, so I got it. So I was like, hey, fall, red and yellow, it works. But the others were just red, so I don't know what the yellow one is, but it's pretty. I like the way it looks. I just kind of saw that as like an added bonus to put in there. That's the details on this one. It's hardy all the way to zone three, so this would be excellent to have in a container. A lot of the plants that I'm talking about are going to be perennials. Not all of them, though. So I'll try and make sure to talk about some tropical ones too. But what's nice is that when it's hardy all the way to zone three, I'm in zone six. So I'll be able to have this in a container and not really have to worry about it surviving the winter time. I still like to shelter my containers somewhat, make sure they get a splash of water like once a month or so during the winter months. But it should come back without any fuss when it's that much more cold hardy than it needs to be. They like full sun and they only get 12 to 15 inches high. So this one's pretty much full grown and about 15 to 18 inches wide. So it's a little bit of a spreader. This is more of like a prairie type plant, which means it's going to want things to be a little bit more on the dry side, which I like. And that's actually the case for most of the flowering plants that I'm gonna be talking about right now. And then down here next to that Hellenium, there's a goldenrod. This is a dwarf goldenrod. There are a lot of different goldenrod varieties. You can see the old flowers kind of moving out there. It's got some brown in it and the new flowers are moving in. They start off a little bit more of a white color and then it'll turn to more of a vibrant yellow. So as this ages, it'll turn more yellow. This one right here is a fresh bud, so it hasn't colored up yet at all. The variety is called Little Lemon Goldenrod. It stays nice and small. This variety is hardy all the way to zone five. It's another full sun plant, fairly drought tolerant once established, and it gets 18 by 18 inches. Goldenrod is really nice to have around for the pollinators. And just if you're nervous about planting goldenrod, research the varieties. They're not all terribly invasive. Actually, some kind of neat hybrids out there of goldenrod. Rudbeckia, these are one of my favorites for fall containers. This one is called Denver Daisy Rudbeckia. Also hardy to zone five, another full sun plant, 18 to 28 inches high and 10 to 25 inches wide. So it has a really nice spread to it. Rudbeckias are really powerful plants. They flower pretty profusely and heavily and the flowers come in a really big arrangement of colors. I mean, it's mostly reds and yellows, but there's different shapes and color patterns to those flowers. I was just really drawn to this one because I like the contrast with the yellowish orange that's on the petals. It's getting a little bit dark out. I had to wait till a little bit later in the day to film. Everything was kind of yellow earlier, but this the flower is more yellow than it's looking on camera. You can see the differences in the foliage, like the younger flowers and smaller flowers. They don't have quite as much going on as the larger, more mature flowers that are on here or on more mature growth, I should say, not necessarily a more mature flower. They have that really cool puffy center where the yellow the pollen starts to come out and that adds a whole nother element of interest to the plant and they're just happy and cheery i really like them they do almost give the appearance to something similar to like a floral mum you know with mums there are perennial mums and floral mums floral mums are going to be 
annuals, so you want to save the seeds if you want to keep those going the next year. And they tend to have more of like a daisy sort of typical flower to them with long petals and not tons and tons of teeny tiny little pillows. Just a different type of flower. Did I just say pillows? I meant to say petals. Y'all are smart, you know what I mean. Okay, next are zinnias. There are so many different varieties of zinnias. There's different heights, tons of different petal forms, different colors. This was just an assorted one I picked up really cheap at my local hardware store. I think it was like $2 and it's perfect for fall. It's nice and orange. I think it was labeled as one from the Magellan mix. Maybe, I can't remember, like there is a sign in front of them. And the Magellan mix, there's a huge assortment of colors. So, but this one right here, I just thought was nice. The flowers kind of vary a little bit. You know, you can see the smaller ones again, more of an orange and they fade into kind of more of a burnt orangish red color. Very pretty. The sizes and everything vary a lot. So it's one to kind of research a little bit if there's like a specific zinnia you want, but they do really well. And then this one, the snails kind of got to it, but it's holding on. It's, it's gonna make it. I went ahead and put down some of that slug and snail bait and it seems to be working. This is a sunstruck oxi sunflower. I know, not what you would think of when you hear sunflower, but sunflowers, the heliopsis, those flowers, there's a huge variety of sizes and colors. And with this one, leaves look at the foliage it's variegated isn't that cool that's what drew me to this one it was i really liked the fact that one it stays smaller i'll talk about that in just a second but look at how neat that foliage is even though the snails have kind of gotten to it it has a neat texture to it almost like a persicaria or a like a persian shield that is but not purple it's kind of glossy the veining stands out really really well even like i said despite the snail holes there's a lot of contrast in that foliage which is something i really like especially with the sunflower because most sunflowers once they're done blooming that's it so with this one i don't know if it's a rebloomer it has been blooming for quite some time i picked this up like a month ago so this one might be a rebloomer the sunfinity is always an option i didn't have great luck with those last year but i think maybe the potting mix i was using wasn't draining quite well enough for the sunfinity uh, but my other sunflowers did okay so i don't really know what the case was there but i've heard other people really like those the sunfinity sunflower i don't have one to show you uh, but that one is one that it's supposed to be a repeat bloomer i think they get like three to four feet high something like that they're kind of cool this one's hardy to zone four and the average size is 14 to 16 inches by 12 to 16 inches wide another good plant for full sun well-drained soils should be pretty drought tolerant once it's established also. And then the last that I actually have in front of me, have on hand to show you guys, is a Coreopsis. Coreopsis has really nice textures. There's a pretty wide variety of different colors with the Coreopsis and like even different flower sizes now. This one's called Lil Bang. It's a red elf Coreopsis. It's a, another full sun perennial to zone five, six to 12 inches high, 12 to 18 inches wide. And again, pretty low maintenance when it comes to its watering needs. It's going to be pretty drought tolerant once it's established. So it'll come back every year. And the Coreopsis, they have a really nice texture to them. I think it's because they the flowers come out at different heights. And I really just like the colors on this Lil Bang Coreopsis. It's the red's a little bit more my style. It's kind of a darker red. In person though, the red is much more dark. That's a little bit more accurate. I think I just needed to kind of tilt it down. It's a really pretty kind of almost scarlet red with a much darker red in the center. And again, the pollinators love them. Okay, and then some plants that I don't have in front of me to show you, but I can pop them up on screen. Hibiscus for people who live someplace that have much more of a mild fall. Hibiscus is a great option because there's orange and there's yellow and they flower pretty freely and they're pretty easy to grow. In fact, I would love to do a container like a tropical fall container. I'll probably do one that mixes like a croton with some sort of black elephant ear and orange flowered hibiscus. I think that'll look really neat. Be a little bit different and maybe an option, like I said, for people who aren't having cool cold fall temperatures. And then of course, snapdragons. Lots of different color varieties. There's even trailing snapdragons. Snapdragons do well with some more mild temperatures. So they'll keep kind of doing their thing as times get closer and closer to fall. And then the same for something like a mini bell, like a mini petunia, the uh, calabracoas. They tend to, I've noticed anyways, my experience with them has been that when temperatures start to cool off a little bit more like towards the nighttime, they get a second burst of energy and they keep flowering, they keep doing their thing. And there are lots of different color varieties. Some of them are double flowers and there aren't a ton of flowering spillers, tons of flowering trailers that can be used in fall containers. There's a lot of petunias and things like that. By the time fall comes around, sometimes they're looking kind of shabby, if, especially if they don't get like their mid to late summer cut back to sort of regain some of their foliage. But the mini bells, I keep calling them mini bells, like the mini petunias, 
have proven winners on my mind. But those smaller varieties usually respond well to those cooler temperatures. Oh, and then sun impatience. I think I have one. Let me, let's go look at that one. Sun impatience are also a nice option. One, because it'll be a perennial for the people who live in warmer climates, I think zone nine or 10 and up, but because compared to a regular impatience, the sun impatience can usually take more cold. They're not cold hardy, but mine don't usually die back and start looking bad until there's a really hard freeze. They'll kind of keep on going. Whereas other impatience, once temperatures are steadily below like 50 or 40 for several days, they start to look a little bit bad. And once a frost hits, a typical impatience, which is like a wateriana, they just, they don't look so good. These usually it takes a couple of light frosts to start knocking them back. So they have a little bit more longevity to them. And there are orange varieties. This one's more of a coral pink. It's really pretty. It's so vibrant that it really like, it's kind of even hard to get on camera, but any of those orange varieties would look really nice in a fall container. And some of them have darker foliage like this one right here. And I believe the variety of this one is called hot coral. And that's, I mean, Look at those flowers. Pretty obvious why, right? But it has darker foliage, which also plays well with the fall theme, having kind of an orangish, even though it's orangish pink because it's coral, but with that dark foliage, looks kind of nice. All right, so that's just a few flowers. There are tons and tons, tons more that I could talk about. This is just some of the ones that I could find around and thought might be interesting to people who are looking for something a little bit different, like I said, from the mums, pansies, whatnot. And um, now let's move on to foliage. There's a lot of foliage. Oh, and don't forget, comment down below with any other additional flowers that you would really like to use in your fall containers. So when it comes to foliage, the list just goes on and on and on. The overall theme is generally just warmer colors, right? Nothing too extreme, mostly browns and reds and yellows and oranges. I do tend to like to mix a lot of greens and purples into things that are gonna be out more towards like the Halloween time. So that's why I have these lemon coral sedums out front. They have a nice, beautiful, bright green. They'll spill over the front. The same thing over here with this wandering you that's gonna do the same thing. Yeah, like I said, those I usually focus on more for Halloween. Same thing with the greens. And then back here, there's a lovely Persian shield. Has an awesome texture to it and I really, like I said, I like it for the holiday. In Kalakajas, there are lots of different dark varieties now. This one, I believe, is painted black gecko. I'm a really big fan of the black coral Kalakaja. They have a shiny appearance to them. They're very nice and dark. They do well for people who live in a warmer climate, maybe have a much more mild fall, where some of these other plants that need to kind of move into a chill you don't have to worry about that. This will do better. Typically with fall containers for a centerpiece, I always go towards a fountain grass, as do most people. They're really popular. They have really nice plumes on them. But this year, I'm really into the sea oat, just because it's a little bit more versatile as far as just having some texture around for the fall time. And it, this, for me, is going to be a perennial. There are a lot of fountain grasses that are perennials, of course, but typically the ones that are sold that stay kind of small have a nice red color to them. There are a few different varieties. Those tend to be annual. So I thought I'd go ahead and try multiple ones this year. But I'm really excited about the sea oat because you get a few seasons of interest with them. Their foliage has a really cool texture to them. Typically when the growth is a little bit more new, the foliage tends to have more of a chartreuse kind of green color to it. And it looks pretty neat. And with these beautiful seed heads that are on here, those come out more of a whitish color. And then they start to dry into this pretty brown, which I think looks nice for fall. It's something just a little bit different from what I'm used to seeing with just a typical fountain grass, which is beautiful. Beautiful, and I love the plumes on them and I plan on using some this year. I just don't have any right now. But like I said, in regards to the fountain grasses, there are a lot of different varieties to choose from, which is kind of fun. There's one from Proven Winners. I can't remember its name, but it'll be up here on the screen. That's like almost has a black foliage to it gets very big. Might be a little bit big for a fall container, but I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how big your containers are, but absolutely stunning. They're just, you know, a regular typical fountain grass, which like I said, where I live is an annual. A lot of them are hardy zones nine and up, the ones that have that really pretty red foliage on them. And that would be a nice perennial option for anybody who lives in a place with a more mild winter. For me, it's an annual, so I only want to use one this year. I don't want to go too big or too crazy with them. And then for me, an absolute staple with fall containers is coleus. There are so many different options with coleus. There's different leaf forms, different colors. Some can take shades, some can take some. A lot of them can take either. It's going to affect the color of the foliage, but that's kind of fun, right? And there are two varieties this year that I'm particularly very drawn to. This one right here is the Color Blaze Ridiculous, like R-E-D, Ridiculous from Proven Winners. You know, Proven Winners are fun with their names. It has an absolutely gorgeous foliage to it. There are a lot of red coleuses out there. thing that I just really like about this one, though, is look at the edges. 
look at that the leaves are somewhat serrated and they have that kind of bright pop of yellow on the sides of the foliage i think that looks so cool and i have also noticed this coleus in comparison to a lot of the coleus i buy i should probably start with that a lot of the coleus i buy tend to just be like assorted coleuses that don't have a name and uh they tend to be a little bit more finicky when the temperatures start to get dry and things are hot, which doesn't happen a lot here. It's typically humid. We get a decent amount of precipitation, but you know, it comes in waves. So it'll like rain for a few days and then nothing for like a week or two. This coleus has not skipped a beat where it has a lot of my other ones. They start to kind of get sad and like I have to really stay on top of keeping them well watered particularly when they're still in their nursery pots. That's the thing is these need to get potted up. It's, I'm gonna be doing that when I'm done with this video and then hopefully sometime next week, planter videos will start coming out. Cause you know, it's hard keeping them going in their nursery cans. But this particular one, this ridiculous, it has been one tough coleus when it comes to that. I mean, it has just strived through some extreme heat when a lot of my others have gotten kind of sad. This one gets 24 to 36 inches tall and 24 inches wide. It'll have almost a nice globe shape to it, which is going to be really neat. Which is something you get out of a lot of coleus, but it's just nice. It's a vigorous grower. And these are hardy zones 10A and up. So annual for me, perennial for those of you who live in nice warmer climates. I'm also very drawn to this coleus that has no name. <laughs> I just thought it was really pretty. Thought I would put it in here in the mix. You can see there's actually three different colors going on in the foliage. Well, heck, really, probably even more than three. I see yellow, I see green, I see some blackish brown purples with some reds. Really, really pretty. The foliage that's coming up out of the new growth is much more colorful, and then it kind of fades off to a lighter color down below. And that's one that I'll be using more for, like I had mentioned, when I do like a Halloween arrangement where I want greens and purples. It's probably where I'll be using that one. This last coleus that I have is a Spitfire coleus. It's also one from Proven Winners. It's a sun to shade, which I should have mentioned all of these coleus so far are sun to shade. The one I don't have a name for, I've just noticed seems to be doing fine in either one. Now, despite this one being bigger than the ridiculous that I just showed, this one actually only gets 18 to 24 inches tall with a spread of 20 inches. So it's actually not supposed to be as big. It just must be a little bit more of a vigorous grower. And the foliage is beautiful, isn't it? The more sun this one gets, the more reddish bronze that foliage should be, which kind of shows a little bit better in this piece back here. See that? Isn't that beautiful? Then the more shade that it gets, there's going to be more green in there. But I like the shape of the leaves. I like the variation in the veining and everything. It's just overall really pretty coleus. Though, to be fair, I'm not sure I've ever <laughs> come across a coleus that I was like, oh, that's ugly. No, I usually like most of them. Another great option for foliage, just for like nice color and texture, are crotons. They are fantastic. These are so pretty in fall arrangements. They're typically hardy zones 10 and up, so I hear about people growing them in zone 9. And when you're done with your fall arrangement, you can lift it right out of whatever container you're using in it and keep it inside as a house plant. And then you can drop it back in the next year when you're making your fall arrangements. It's just, they add so much vibrancy. There's so much color to them. It's all the different color that you get in a croton that makes them perfect for fall containers. All of the various yellows, reds, greens, and oranges. It just looks nice. It's a standout plant and makes the containers really pop. I mean, for example, <laughs> what stands out the most over here? Probably the crotons. Yeah, crotons just have a huge impact wherever they're used. Oh, and another one I want to mention that I don't have to show on camera right now, but hookahs, hookarellas, really nice texture. They're good to have like kind of in the middle of the arrangements and they are just stunning. There's one from Proven Winners I really like. I can't remember its name, but I'll put it up here on the screen has a really nice vibrant orange color to it. And then the ones that are like a beautiful, beautiful dark red. Absolutely stunning, great perennials for a fall container. Then when it comes to trailers, ivy is always a nice option. The lemon coral sedum is fantastic. Tragiscanthas, secretias, those work great. And sweet potato vines. Sweet potato vines are a fantastic plant to use in fall arrangements. And the reason for that is that they come in a really nice variety of colors and leaf shapes. These ones that have more of like an somewhat of an oak shape leaf to them. That's kind of nice for fall and just nice dark foliage. I actually picked this one up much earlier in the season, been holding onto it for my fall planters. The variety is called Sweet Georgia Bullfrog and it's one that likes a little bit more shade. Usually sweet potato vines, kind of like coleus, you can grow from sun to shade or part shade. The less sun they get, the more kind of long and lanky they will look, but I've been keeping it in the shade like they said and I'm 
it's a little bit lanky to be honest so I might move it into more sun we'll see but it has great color there's some nice green speckling mixed in with the bronzy foliage overall I just think it's a really pretty sweet potato vine like I said there are a lot of different dark colored sweet potato vines that would work wonderfully another trailer I know it doesn't really seem fall themed but rosemary there are some trailing rosemaries that I just think look kind of cute if you're doing like whiskey barrel planters there's something neat about them coming over that wood it looks nice same thing with like a tin pot something like that and that also leads me to one that I don't have out to show you but the um creeping thyme creeping thyme looks really cool it has really dainty foliage on it which adds a lot of nice texture and I think looks nice coming over the sides of like I said whiskey barrels and typical like fall planter type pots oh and creeping jenny let's go find some creeping jenny I got plenty of that around here hi pumpkin how you doing Creeping Jenny. That's another excellent option. And perennial, I believe zones six and up, they can go sun to shade. They're going to be more leggy in the shade than they are in the sun. And there are different color varieties too. This one right here, I think is just a normal Creeping Jenny, though it does have some kind of gold coloring on the foliage. But I think it's just a normal one. But there is one that's called like Goldilocks, something like that, where the foliage is more of this kind of lighter green, like you're seeing in the middle of this one. And it hangs tight. That's one thing I like about it. It usually stays very tight up against what it's trailing over. So it has a nice clean look to it. Like I said, the list goes on and on and on as far as plants are concerned for fall containers. There are so many options out there. Great things to use other than just like your typical kale, cabbage, and mums and pansies, which I think are beautiful. I'm sure I'll be using some in some of the things I do this year, but here's just some ideas for those of you who are asking about things I like to use in fall containers and arrangements. Then there you go. There it is. And I'm sure I'll think of more. And comment down below with anything that you really like to use in your containers. It would be impossible for me to name absolutely everything that I think looks great in fall containers because there's really a lot out there. The trick is being able to get it from the nurseries before they switch over to selling exclusively mums, kales, and cabbage and whatnot. And that's why I wanted to make sure before I actually start doing my planter videos to do this one now and get it out so that the people who were asking about suggestions they can get out maybe find some things or maybe it'll inspire them to just see what the options are at your local nurseries and get going on things before <laughs> before it's too late and the nurseries don't have them anymore okay it's time to go the mosquitoes are biting and those cicadas are driving me crazy hopefully that's coming through soothing on your end when i'm trying to focus on talking for y'all i don't appreciate it as much it actually is kind of soothing just not as much when you're editing and wearing headphones gets a little annoying like i said comment down below just say hi or what, any tips tricks suggestions some fun things like to do with your fall arrangements say so i have all of my social media linked down below in the description of the video i use instagram way more than anything else that's probably the best place to follow me and if you haven't already and you'd like to give the video a thumbs up it makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel and i really do appreciate it so thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell I upload multiple times a week and that'll let you know when new videos come out i hope everybody's doing well having a great day great life everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye